My butternut squash with chicken casserole is easy and delicious. If you like fall and holiday flavors that are common around Thanksgiving, but you want to have them again and in a different way, this is for you. It's kind of a dressing or stuffing with butternut squash, toasted bread, vegetables, and chicken. So it's definitely a full meal. For a 9 by 13 pan, I am going to use one small roasted butternut squash. What I did is I peeled it and I cut it into thin pieces, maybe about a quarter of an inch. I rubbed some butter on them and I roasted them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour just to give the pieces a little bit of color. Some of the batches I may have roasted for an additional 10 minutes for 40 minutes but between 30 to 40 minutes to start to get some color on the butternut squash without burning them too much is probably what you'll need. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of bread, a mixture of white and wheat bread that I need to use up. I just toasted that. Here I have some shredded chicken. A whole chicken was on sale the other day, so I bought it. And I was going to brine it and roast it, but I didn't have enough time. So I just boiled it with onion, garlic, celery, carrot, and bay leaf on low for about two and a half hours and then I took out the chicken and I took the meat off the bone. This is I would say one and a half cups in grams. It's 350 grams. Some of the stock is over there. I'm going to use to moisten the casserole and over here I have some vegetables, some onion and celery that I sauteed for about five minutes and then I added a small golden delicious apple and then at the end two large cloves of garlic finely diced. So my oven is preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is, go, this is gonna go really quickly. I'm just going to cut or tear the bread and the butternut squash into pieces. So here I'll just tear with the, the bread does not matter if they're perfect pieces, perfectly sized, just rip them into pieces that are about the same size. Because they do not have to be cut into perfect squares. And then these butternut squash, I'm gonna do something similar. Take some of it here, just cut it like that, and then throw it in there. So there's my oven. So I am going to keep doing this, and then when it's done, I'll bring you back. I finished tearing up the bread and chopping up the butternut squash. I also added in the vegetables. Now I'm going to add in the chicken. Like I said, I would say this is maybe a cup and a half, 350 grams. I actually may not add all of this because it's kind of a lot of chicken. I'm adding a combination of white and dark meat because like I said, I boiled a whole chicken. But I'm gonna probably first add in the dark meat because I think it's gonna be better in this. And then if I think it needs more chicken, I'll go for the white meat. Honestly, it's just however much you have on hand. I think this would be a good way to use up leftovers in a kind of creative way. If you've never worked with butternut squash before, I highly suggest you give it a try. I have some videos here on my channel about how to roast it and how to cut it up. I feel like butternut squash is a very underappreciated vegetable. When it's really good, it's really, really good. So yeah, take a look at those videos. Try this recipe. One good thing about butternut squash is they keep a long time. You can buy one and if it's fresh, a month later, it'll still be good. So like I said, I feel like it's 
a very underappreciated vegetable. We'll say that I used one generous cup of shredded chicken. So now it's time to add the spices. Just like when making dressing or stuffing, you will be surprised how much you'll have to add to this or any type of casserole to really get it to be flavorful. I'm just gonna go by eye, but I would say start off with half of a teaspoon each of garlic powder. Well, just to help it easier for you to remember, half a teaspoon of garlic powder and then half a teaspoon of onion powder. Like I said, this is to start off with. You can add more later, but it's very difficult to take away. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. Half a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. And then half a teaspoon of sage. And I am using the sage that looks like herbs. It is not ground into a fine powder. So it looks like this. And I'm just crushing it in my fingers as I add it to casserole. So if you're using the kind that's very finely ground, I would not use half a teaspoon. I would use less. But if you're using the kind that is looks like leaves of herbs, you could get away with uh, probably about half a teaspoon. So, and then the salt. I am just gonna sprinkle in some salt here because I did not salt the water when I cooked the chicken. So I can definitely add some now. Now the stock that was made by boiling the chicken or the, the broth, I am going to add that. You can see that some of the fat congealed on the top. If some of that gets in, it's okay. It's gonna add flavor. I'm gonna start off by adding one cup. So this is just like making dressing or stuffing for Thanksgiving. Start off by adding a cup of this homemade broth. And stir in the fat to distribute it more evenly. That's just a bunch of flavor. I'm gonna stir everything together so that the bread can get soaked. And then I will taste this and I'll see if it needs more spices. I ended up adding two cups of the chicken broth. This I think is a good moisture level. You will know that you've added enough moisture if you stir it around for a few minutes then you let it sit and you pack it down and when you tap it like this, it has this consistency. It's moist. You think it might just be too moist, just a tad bit too moist, but it's actually just right. I tasted it and it's good, but I'm gonna add a little more spice. I'm gonna add another round of spices about what I did the first time. I'm gonna mix this in and I'm gonna try it. And if it's the way I want it, then I'm gonna add my egg and then put it into the oven. This tastes very good. I like how it's spiced. So I'm just gonna mix in my egg now. If you forget the egg is no big deal, it's just going to help bind everything together so that when you cut it, it will hold its shape. Once the egg is mixed in, I'm going to pack everything down again in a nice even layer. And I am going to bake this butternut squash and chicken casserole. My butternut squash casserole with chicken just came out of the oven. It was in at 350 Fahrenheit covered for 30 minutes and then uncovered for another 30 to make the top a bit more crispy. It looks and smells amazing. 
this casserole had a nice crusty top and looked absolutely delicious so I couldn't wait to dig in and give it a try. And when I took the first bite I knew that my butternut squash casserole with chicken was a big success. Although this casserole was definitely savory the apple and butternut squash gave it a little bit of sweetness that was very nice. Together with the toasted bread, chicken, and Thanksgiving style spices, this was very flavorful. Although you definitely could just boil or even microwave the butternut squash, I highly recommend that you roast the squash in the oven like I did because roasting butternut squash and getting a little bit of color really brings out the flavor. I also really liked the texture contrast. The top was a little bit crispy and the center was nice and moist. The casserole wasn't super thick so there was a bit of crispiness in every bite. I was also really glad that I added extra vegetables, the onions and the celery really adding to the flavor. Like I said this butternut squash casserole with chicken was a big success. It was hearty and satisfying while still being very healthy. And like I already said, I think this casserole would be great as a Thanksgiving side dish or as a fall meal. But I'm releasing this recipe after the holidays and I think that this would be a great option if you want to use up some leftovers from Christmas or New Year's, have something warm and comforting on a cold winter night, have something satisfying that's actually fairly low in calories. This butternut squash casserole is actually the first recipe in a short series I'm doing of healthy dishes after the holidays. I'm sure a lot of people want some ideas on how they can eat good food that's not quite as rich. So stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.